I have the task today to uh, talk about the fossil camp. Much has been said about that. President Castagnetti yesterday briefly talked about this, and this is probably this is probably something that also the mayor has mentioned when mentioning about the, um, the mission of the foundation. There are just a couple of elements that I would like to dwell upon, and these elements refer to what we are currently doing when researching transit camps. This is closely related to what we said yesterday when opening the conference. We talked about what a transit camp really is. Is that really a transit camp or, as Marco Minardi said, are we talking about lives in transit? So very briefly, uh, the Fossili camp has a very long uh, history. This history started in 1942 and ended in 1970. This means that in these many years, the barracks at the Fossili camp were inhabited, they uh, served different purposes, there was a big watershed uh, between the war which ended in 1947, uh, that is because only in 1947 did the military use of the camp end. And then soon after the war, the camp changed its use, it became a camp for civilians. So basically, when I say for civilians, I refer to the fact that the barracks had to be used for, so to say, civilian purposes, civilian lives. But that marked a big, uh, a major watershed. What happened during the war, and that time frame was slightly less than what happened afterwards, but that had a much bigger impact to the lives and that had a bigger impact on the events of Europe at war. But it's important to highlight on these transit camps, as we said yesterday from uh, the uh, presentations uh, on uh, the Dossin uh, barracks and, to, and on Trancy. And this makes it possible to establish uh, major links between uh, a system, a system that we define, um, a Nazi system, and a series of national institutions which are not always taken as, uh, as, as they should be. We tend, in a way, to sort of uh, eliminate the blame from us. So from 1943 to, fr from December 1943 to August 1944, the Fossili concentration camp was transformed from a camp for uh, war prisoners, then into a camp for Jews, and then a transit camp for politicians, Jew, Jewish politicians, uh, who, were, who had to be uh, moved to the Nazi lagers. And this was done by the Italian. These transformations were made by the Italian Social Republic. And the first transports um, leaving the Fossoli camp uh, went under direct responsibility of the Italian Socially, Social Republic. I'm saying this because uh, looking at transit camps helps us better highlight uh, certain phenomena which if you look at the major bigger picture of concentration camps, uh, one f might find it difficult to identify. So there was a very close uh, cooperation uh, between the social, Italian Social Republic and the occupying Nazi force, and there was a direct responsibility of the Italian Social Republic in, uh, de in the deportation of Jews from Italy. Fabio Levi, who heads the Primo Levi International Center in Turin, says that Fossoli is actually the evidence of what we are looking for, uh, the evidence of this Italian collaboration in the deportations. It's very difficult to find the document, uh, the signed document of these deportations. So that's the first thing to point out. A second element I would like to focus on 
come posso dire, una refers to a very short um, remark I would like to share with you. Uh, I'm going to be very brief because we're running um, short of time. What I'd like to say concerns this, the, the period after the end of the Second World War. In that period, the fossil camp continued its life. Uh, that life uh, changed. It changed because the community of Donzeno Saltini arrived here in Fossoli. And this community turned a place of detention, a place of internment, a place of horror, the anti-chamber of hell, as this uh, uh, would be defined uh, in uh, the documents of the time. So this place was turned into a place in which brotherhood would reign. And Don Zeno Saltini did this by always keeping an eye at the history of the place. Don Zeno Saltini was the first historian of the Fossoli camp. Some documents uh, were found in the archive of Dino Madelfia, uh, so the archive of the community, which is now in uh, the, on the hills of Grosseto, in the Grosseto area. And there we find some important documents. And that is because Don Zeno wanted his people to really understand what the camp was and how the camp had to be transformed based on another utopia, that is to say the utopia of a common life of a collective life, the collective life that Don Zeno uh, would try to disseminate in various parts of Italy, starting from the Fossoli camp. So the Nomadelfia community left Fossoli in 1952, and then in 1954 the camp was again occupied by the, the, the uh, refugee community of refugees from Dalmatia, from Eastern Dalmatian refugees, and then uh, the definition, the situation of the Italian eastern border was then defined some years later and over 250 families leaving Istria in that period could find a second place uh, of accommodation here in Fossoli in order for them to, um, to rebuild their community. That was the so-called San Marco village. So they ended up in a former concentration camp, although the Nomadelfia community had uh, erased some uh, signs of the detention, like, for example, the, the wall, the, the, the barbed wire, and so on, and other elements, uh, and the turrets. But these families had the possibility of rebuilding their own community. The symbol of this reconstruction was the building of the small church. The small church is today one of the key pivotal elements uh, of the camp. I hope you will all have the chance on Saturday morning to visit the camp. And the church really tells us that that's something certain. In other words, the barracks you find in Fossoli are something different than the barracks uh, uh, that were built in 1942. They serve a different purpose. Interestingly, um, alongside with this process, the town, the community, and Italy as a whole, started working uh, to build, uh, to rebuild memory. This process uh, from, uh, started from Fossoli, the today's San Marcos village, but uh, Fossoli is going to be remembered uh, for its purpose during the war. I think it was Claudius Garbi yesterday who said, who talked about uh, what it is that we live in the realm of indifference when we remember when we remember an event. Well, this process is really very interesting, in my opinion. So this is yet another element of reflection. This is yet uh, additional food for thought for you. But I think it is interesting to focus on this because we know that this memory a memory that uh, was partly not recognized, uh, that was kept hidden, then led uh, to distortions. Uh, 
it was distorted and sometimes uh, what comes out, what comes to the surface is not, uh, is, is distorted, is not transparent. So this process starts from the recognition of a memory linked to deportations and this in uh, a post-World War uh, period in Italy, but not only in Italy, also in, in Europe as we heard yesterday. This is a topic that we should for a certain time set aside because this topic is a topic that is uh, at the moment not useful to rebuild a community that uh, really needs heroic gestures. So it is the hero, it is the heroes of the resistance movement who become uh, the core element from which uh, the Republican Italy can uh, start. But here in Capi we have Fossoli. In 1955, on the occasion of the 10-year anniversary from the Italian liberation, some families and specifically the families of those who were killed, of the political internees who were killed in the shooting ground, basically wrote to Bruno Losi and actually said that uh, on that occasion they could not forget what had happened six kilometers away from there. So that was the occasion to, in a way, start uh, the first, uh, to inaugurate the first national exhibition on Nazi extermination camps. That would be, so to say, the driving element for a whole series of elements uh, to, uh, be, uh, to start a whole series of remarks and focus, uh, and focus on deportations. So I will now stop here. Un po in sospeso tante um, cose che some things uh, nel, nei will probably emerge, some other aspects will probably emerge from the speeches of other cosa, uh, speakers. Uh, There's one last thing I would like to Carpe, mention. There is a big uh, exhibition held here in Carpi e within the framework of a bigger international celebration, and this is uh, an Italian engine, so to say this is di uh, very important, especially for Carpi because the Fossoli camp was a national camp che ha intrecciato la storia nazionale that uh, so much characterized the whole of Italian history that became fundamental un to give uh, birth not only come to a big event like this mostra, exhibition but this da cui will probably be uh, the route from which the project of the memorial for the deputies that we will uh, visit uh, next uh, Saturday and that will be the topic uh, of our discussion during these days to understand uh, what were the reasons uh, at the basis of this decision and also to understand how the work of the foundation is related to that project. So the willingness here is to bring together a historical, physical place uh, whose task is to give voice to all the lives in transit who passed uh, from here, as Marco Minardi said yesterday, but at the same time whose task is also to tell how we specifically build a specific memory in our country, that is the memory of deportation, and also to talk about the art. Thank you.